One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. go all right so welcome to this paint along today we are going to be painting Circe from Reaper miniatures and this one is was it from the last bones Kickstarter from the Greek Odyssey series and uh, of course the focus goes mad at the wrong moment there we go Sculpted by Christine Van Patten. It's a kind of an interesting sculpt. She's got, it comes with two pigs as well. So Circe uh, or Kerki, depending on uh, Greek versus modernized, anglicized pronunciation. Um, famous from, from the Odyssey. The, uh, the heroes arrive on her island and uh, discover that she has all kinds of animals hanging around with her. And uh, she tricks them into drinking a potion and turns them into various animals, lions and pigs and things like that. So yeah, Circe, the, the sorceress. It's an interesting character. It gets a bit of a bad rap, I think. But uh, the main kind of interesting thing about her, she I, I looked for descriptions and uh, she's not really described anywhere. And uh, if you look at some modern novels that are described in a very big variety of ways. Um, so I'm going to kind of go back to first principles. I thought I'm making up these first principles. And she's described um, as a daughter of Helios, who was the, in Greek mythology, is the, the Titan who was the sun. And uh, he has various children with various nymphs. And his children are all kind of He's a sun god, so they're kind of bright. So I'm going to go with uh, a bright color scheme and as well as a little bit of traditional Greek cloth colors for her. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do, we're going to use Reaper's Golden Skin as the main skin tone. So that's going to be Reaper 9091 and 9092. Golden Shadow and Golden Skin, which is a sort of a warm, yellowish skin tone. I'm going to highlight that with Creamy Ivory, my favorite colors for doing skin tones. And we're going to use my other favorite, Burgundy Wine, 9025 Burgundy Wine. is going to be the shadow component of the skin tone. We're going to use the Burgundy Wine for shadow in a number of places, too. Uh, one description I found described her as having yellow eyes. Yellow eyes and a pointy chin. Whatever that means. So we're going to use sun yellow. It's going to be like the, the secondary color in her eyes. We'll give her dark eyes with a secondary color of yellow in them. And uh, for her clothing, we're going to go with a more traditional sort of... Um, well, I was going to go with like a traditional cold white or warm white looking cloth, like a linen. And uh, instead, what I'm going to do is give her kind of an interesting, fancy looking dress color. So the, the colors I'm going to use for this dress are a bit odd. I'm going to start with Reaper's LED blue and red neon glow. I know, doesn't seem like very traditional ancient Greek colors, but these are going to neutralize each other and give us a very interesting sort of a purpley blue color. I'm going to highlight up from that with the red neon glow and then switch into leather white and finally with um, solid white. So it's going to give us a sort of ethereal looking fabric that goes from a bluish to a purplish to a reddish and then into white. And uh, so it looks should, should look quite light over the top of the, the skin tone, which is going to be a little bit more, a little brighter, a little stronger skin tone. I'm not 100% sold on what I'm going to do with the hair, but right now my plan is to do a base of burgundy wine and then start highlighting it up with black and brown and then use probably the golden skin color uh, to initially lighten the black and brown and the final highlights will be 
either creamy ivory or solid white, something like that. But I might change my mind as I go, but that's my plan for now. So that's the overall plan. And she's, of course, standing in a, in a courtyard. So she's going to have like a stone base. And we're going to put some shadowed stone, some olive green, and things like that to be the, the color of, of the stone that she's standing on. Thus is the plan. Okay. So let's get started. We're going to start with the skin. And we are going to build our palette from there. So burgundy wine is the first thing going in. Nope. Camera's pointing kind of the wrong way. There we go. I had several paint accidents yesterday where I dropped the things I was working on and sent the paint flying everywhere. I, I managed to drop... I think on Thursday I dropped a half a bottle of silver paint into the palette and then I hit the camera with the palette and there's silver paint all over everything. So that was good fun. I'll try not to do anything too foolish like that today. We'll see how that goes. It was a very quiet day here overall yesterday. There's practically no visitors yesterday. And then uh, I had two visitors so far today, both of whom stayed for several hours each. And I'm expecting one other visitor who I thought was going to be here several hours ago, but hasn't been here yet. So I might get interrupted by somebody. We'll see how that goes. But uh, hopefully we're going to get a nice day, nice day afternoon for painting up this wonderful mini. Christine Van Patten's Circe. Let's get some stone color on there. Well, there's our gray stone. The base, and there's some. I'm not doing that on the palette. I'm gonna say camouflage green, but the camouflage green needs to be cleaned off a little bit. Bit of gunk on the end of the bottle. Why am I using the green? Just to make the stone color look a little bit different from the way I typically paint everything. I do quite often end up with a plain gray stone base, and uh, which is fine for miniatures for D and D game and that sort of thing, but. I want to look just a little, that's way too much green paint. Look, Make her look a little different. And then what have I forgotten? I've got all those colors. We'll get the yellow later. We need, yeah, let's do the cloth. And we'll get LED blue. You guys are already probably thinking, this guy's nuts. LED blue. Red neon glow. Odd color choices for ancient Greek dress. I was looking at some uh, photos of clothing from the um, reproductions of clothing based on archaeological information, archaeological finds, some pottery, some written descriptions, all that kind of stuff. And they had this um, display that they put on of Minoan and uh, Minoan and I can't remember the other place, uh, but clothing styles and uh, they had some really interesting um, stuff from the from this display so if if you if you just google like ancient greek women's clothing um, you'll find these um, clothing displays and some of the stuff i was surprised by how um, colorful it was there's an example of it and so this is the dress, and this is the um, the information that they're working from on a piece of, like on a mosaic or a piece of pottery or something. And this is the the colors and the patterns and things that are on the dress. It's pretty, pretty complex. This is the warm white. This is the linen white that I was talking about. And then a lot of interesting blue and red and colors like that in the cloth. So that's what was kind of inspiring my ideas for this this piece. And then I found another photo, not photo, but um, a painting that somebody did that had um, some very interesting colors in it. That the skin color I'm not really convinced by. It's very peachy, very uh, pink. But this, this is this these these are the colors which I was inspired to do the blue and the um, red neon glow cloth from this red. Uh, as, there's a blue component and an orange component, and then the skin color is showing through the cloth. And that's what I was kind of inspired by. And then the hair color, I think we'll do something a little bit like that. A darker color into something with quite a shiny highlight and a gold, um, 
laurel on, on the on the head. So that was that was my reference ideas that were kind of inspiring me for the way I was going to paint this. There was one other one. Yeah, the, the, the other one I was looking at was in terms of non-metallic metal gold. But uh, I decided not to do any non-metallic metal style gold today. We're just going to stick with using metallics. And for my gold, I'm going to use actually some Games Workshop gold. So don't tell anybody. We're going to use Balthazar gold and Auric armor gold for the gold laurels and for the gold uh, wine cup. This is the plan. Okay, so let's get some painting going. So first thing I'm going to do... Oh, I forgot to put the white on there. Let's put the white on the palette. There we go. And need some white there, probably. That'll do for now. We'll do the gold at the end. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is to put the base coat for the skin tone on. And this Reaper Bones Mini is it's not badly cast, but it does have some odd... Uh, features on it. So you have to look carefully and make sure you get rid of all these uh, casting defects that are like, well, they're, they're not casting defects, it's uh, mold lines for the most part. And uh, the other funny thing about her is her arm, because uh, it's a pre assembled mini, the arm tends to be out of place and too low. And if the arm is sitting too low, then uh, the wine would just be tipping out of her, her cup there, right? So what I did is I glued the handle of the cup to her chest in a position that held it level. So as she's standing here in this pose, the wine is not tipping out all over the place and making a big mess. So that was the general idea. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is my skin tone base color. So I'm getting a bit of burgundy wine and I'm gonna mix in quite a bit of golden skin shadow. And that's gonna give me a sort of purpley, um, a desaturated purple base color and that's going to be my first skin tone why am i doing that it's because i want a nice dark start point because i want the shadows in the skin to be visible under the cloth and what we're going to do is we're going to paint uh, we're going to paint her as though she does not have any cloth on at all and then we're going to highlight all of her skin uh, like her body shapes, her legs and all that, uh, as though the cloth is not there. And then we'll paint the cloth over top. And it's going to give an effect. It's going to make the cloth feel a bit lighter, like it's a little bit translucent. And it's going to have a bit of a look like that uh, second picture I was looking at with the, um, the, the red and blue effect from that cloth. And that's what I'm going to go for today. There we go. So as usual, the paint is not particularly thin, but I am not putting a huge amount of paint on at a time. And what I put on, I'm spreading it out. So it's gonna dry in a thin layer. And I wanna be careful not to damage uh, the paint that's already been put on by going over the same areas too often. So I know it might seem a bit weird to to paint all the whole mini essentially with this skin tone base color but that's gonna uh, like I said the, the skin tone will show through the cloth then and uh, has an interesting look so I'm not being super careful about this at this stage I'm not super worried about this color getting everywhere like if this gets on things that are going to be gold well that gold would be reflecting this color anyway the main thing I don't want to do is just make huge lumps of paint. I want to make sure that whatever I do put on is going to be uh, smoothed out. If you do find that you're having a problem with that, you can put just a small amount of water in there just to make the paint flow a little bit easier. But you shouldn't need to thin this very much. In terms of light direction, I didn't mention that at the start, the light is going to be shining on her from her right. So as we look at it from the back, the light's coming this way. On the other side, the light's coming fairly high up and that way. 
So we don't have to worry about that just at the moment, but when we get to a later stage uh, and we start highlighting, that's going to help us determine uh, where to place the lightest highlights. She has quite a lot of skin showing on that side, and that's why I chose that, so that her skin would be um, kind of brightly lit uh, in the final in the final mini. Now, she's got this little cape hanging down, which is part of the same dress. It goes over her shoulder, through the back, and then drapes back down. So it's the same color cloth, but where it's hanging out from her body, it's not going to show the skin color through nearly as much on the back. So I'm not going to be painting this color on the, the back part. And her other leg, okay, this, her leg here goes pretty much straight down inside there. There's her hip. Her, you can tell because her left hip is slightly higher than her right hip and her right leg is bent. So the other leg is probably straight in the back there and tucked in against the back of this leg. So we're going to paint a bit of a the suggestion of a shadow where the other leg would be behind the cloth and be back in there. And again, this is just you know, um, we're not doing any super complicated blending techniques or anything like that in this. We're basically just going to apply simple layers. And uh, it might sound like I'm making things way too complicated right off the bat. But um, even with just a simple, straightforward tabletop paint job, um, it's worth thinking about your light, thinking about what the mini's going to look like when it's finished. And uh, if you get into that habit and it just incorporate those ideas into your painting, then over time your miniatures are going to show that more and more. And uh, the final look of your minis is going to be that much more dramatic and that much more interesting to look at. So a worthwhile effort to, uh, to always think about the lighting on the figure right from the start. Good rule of thumb is if you haven't chosen the light direction before you start painting the mini, as soon as you start putting the base coats on, just make a habit of saying to yourself, which way is the light shining on this mini? And then pick some color, doesn't matter what color it is, and mark it on the base. You can clearly see from the airbrushing that I did, it's darker on the back, lighter on the front. I've chose that light direction before I started painting, but I'm going to put an arrow on the base like that. That's my light direction. And I'm going to put the arrow out here so that when I paint all these stones, I don't lose track of the light direction. And I think I haven't really thought this part through yet, but the question would be, is she indoors or outdoors? If she's outdoors and the sun is very, very bright, then the sun is far away. Her shadows are going to be relatively tight and small behind her. But if she's uh, indoors, say, and the light is coming from torchlight or for some lamps or something like that, and the light is closer to her, if the light source is close, the shadows are going to be larger. Okay? So distant light source, smaller shadows, close-up light source, the shadows are going to be wider. And that doesn't mean that the shadow is fully intense for the whole width of the shadow but the total space that's in the direct shadow is going to be larger. And there'll be a, a larger zone of, of um, incomplete shadow, um, kind of like a corona of, of less shadow around that. You know what, since that's an idea that a lot of people don't understand, I'm going to put that on a base and show exactly what it means right now. Let's get some... Nightshade purple is a great color for this. Let's just do a quick demo of that. Yeah, let's get a another paint handle. There we go. Okay, so every object that casts a shadow, right? So in this case, I'm just going to pretend that there's a post. Okay, so here's our post. And the post is standing straight up towards you out of the base. So there's post number one, and there's post number two. 
So the 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 distance to a shadow or to a light source determines how big the shadow cast by an object is. So let's say there's Earth, right? And the sun is a billion miles away over here somewhere. So the sun, light passes by the sun. So here's the light from the sun coming towards the earth. So all the light from inside this part of the triangle is hitting the earth. The light from out here, okay, some light is going to be passing out here, some is going to be passing out there. But everything that's shining from inside here through this triangle is going to hit the earth. But no light can hit back here because the earth is in the way. So the shadow of the earth is going to be quite big. Okay. Now the first, but because we're infinitely, not infinitely far, but we're, we're very, very far away. When you start looking at this on the scale of a small object, a tiny, tiny little object, on Earth, there's the light that's coming towards it is basically, it's, it's essentially all parallel by the time you get that close. And the shadow in behind that object is therefore going to be long and straight, okay? So when we look at our object here, these are our posts standing upright, and assuming that the light is coming directly at it from the side. So the light is coming this way. There's our object. Okay. So you're going to get, this is a distant light source. So the shadow is going to be almost exactly the same shape as the object, same width as the object. And you're going to have a zone of almost complete shadow directly behind the object. And that's if the, the light source is far away. If the light source is close up, okay, then some of the light, okay, The light coming from fairly close, you're going to get a zone instead where like, how do I explain this? Um, so light from out here, right, can shine in there. Light from out here can shine in there. But the earth is going to be blocking a lot of it. So as the, the shadow that the earth casts is going to be least dark there. And then as you get closer and closer in, there's a zone in here where no light can hit. Okay? So the shadow starts out there, and on the ground it looks like that. Or on, say, Jupiter, or on the surface of the moon, it looks like that. And as you get closer in to the center, okay, it gets darker and darker until right in the center of that shadow, it's darkest. So no light can hit there. So that's 100% shadow. A little bit further out might only be 70% shadow, 60% shadow, 50, 40, 30. So the shadow gets less the further out from the object you get. Okay. So with a small object, a long and this so this is shadow being cast by a large circular object with the light source that way. The closer the object that that's the light source gets to the object, the larger the zone where no light can reach is. So when we do that on our figure here, if we have a very close light source, like there's our light source, then the zone where no light can hit in the back here, so this light is coming across this way. That's the, 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 the widest point of our shadow. And light coming this way, that's the widest point of our shadow. But the zone in here, where no light at all can hit, 
is going to be quite large. And then you get this zone of partial shadow around the outside of it. So when we go to paint our figure, this is what we were all talking about, okay? And we're trying to decide, are we going to do big shadows? Are we going to do small shadows? What's it going to be? You think about how far away is the light source. So the sun, very, very far away, relatively small, clear shadows. A light source up close, relatively large shadows, and the edges of those shadows are going to be... Um, not they're not going to be a hundred percent shadow it's going to go from a little bit of shadow progressively into a lot of shadow okay i know there's a whole bunch of technical scientific terms for that I don't want to get into that you just want to think about when you're starting out bright light source far away small shadows light source close up big shadows and that zone of incomplete shadow is larger when you have an object which a light source which is very close by Okay, that's the general idea. So when we paint the shadows on our mini, she's in torchlight, the shadows are going to be big. Okay. That was your, your TMI for the day. Now, so the next thing I want to do, this is the, the basic shadow uh, color. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to paint the burgundy wine um, all over her hair. And I'm also going to deepen some of the shadows with burgundy wine because I want them to be to be darker. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to paint her eye sockets with burgundy wine so they're nice and dark. And that's going to end up being the eyelash color. You might think you want it to be black, but you don't necessarily want it to be black. You just want it to be a very dark color. And this burgundy wine, when it dries, uh, looks like a very, very dark purple color. And that's going to be perfect. I'm going to paint all of her hair this color as well. It might look a little bit purpley on screen right now, but it's going to darken a lot as it dries. Give us a nice dark shadow. And I'm going to do all of the hair, including all of the gold uh, accoutrements and jewelry and things, the laurel wreath and whatever she's got going on uh, in her hair. And that's going to give us a nice dark base color for the gold as well as a result. Paint all of her hair this color. Even though my intention is for her hair to be brown with a sort of gold colored highlight later on. Now, if, if your paint is really thick, this is an area where you want to be a little bit careful because of all those deep folds sculpted in the hair. Uh, if your paint is quite thick, it's easy to fill in the texture with your paint and lose the texture. So if you see that happening, then this is a good place to thin your paint a little bit and then do a couple of thin coats to get the nice dark color that you need. Um, just bear in mind that you don't ever have to use the same paints that I'm using, but something similar is going to give you a similar result to, to what I'm doing. So like for burgundy wine, you could also use Reaper's Brick Red. You could use uh, Games Workshop Corn Red works for this. Uh, Scarlet Red or Gory Red from Vallejo Game Color. There's any option you want. You just want a, a dark red, which has a, a high um, mahogany sort of component to it. And that's going to give you a nice dark base color. It is not going to look like red. It's going to look like a dark purple when it dries. Okay. So then the next thing I want to do is I'm going to mix the basically more of this in with the gold shadow make a darker mix and then I'm going to paint um, slightly deeper shadows in a number of places on the figure so the first place I want to do that this leg okay the light being on that side the inside of this leg is going to be a cast shadow so the whole inside of that leg is going to be this dark color so we're going to basically make a V of this dark down the front of her dress, the whole back side of this leg, and then right down the length of her leg, the back half of it is going to be this color. 
and then we know that her other leg is probably behind here somewhere. So we're going to give a hint of the shape of that leg by making a larger shadow like that. So that stripe of lighter color is the hint of the color of the leg behind. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on the back of this leg. The back of this is all going to be um, in shadow. So the whole back of this leg. The other thing to think about is if cloth, for sort of slightly transparent cloth or translucent cloth, it only looks translucent in the zone where light can pass through, hit an object behind, and then bounce back through. If um, the light is really bright, you're going to get a glare on the most raised parts closest to the light source, and no, no skin color is going to show through that. In the areas where you're in total shadow and the light's not hitting directly, no light is going through. So it's not hitting the skin and not coming back out. So you don't see skin through the cloth in the shadow. It, this is a thicker cloth, right? I'm not doing like filmy nylon or anything like that. So it's just going to be um, the back of this leg back here is just going to be shadow. Same thing in behind the knee in there. Just be the shadow. Okay. And then um, did that side. Yeah, so the whole side of her body up here is going to be in shadow. In between her arm and her torso, her chest. The bottom of her hands. All going to have stronger shadow. This wrist. Then this part of the elbow is probably going to catch a bit of light coming this way, so we won't make that completely dark underneath Get a little bit of light on there just on the front and then around the hands again and then this part of her chest the back of the chest is going to be all in shadow okay and then the light is going to hit on that side and then this breast is going to have a shadow underneath it like that the light coming that way and then the back side of her body over here. Some stuff up in the top there. So this arm, the light coming that way, the back of that arm, there's our light source. The back of that arm is all going to be the shadow color initially. We might do a bounce light highlight on the back of that. We'll see how we feel. And then that's the back of that arm. So then the next thing to look at is going to be uh, the other side of this right leg. Okay, so we need to have a shadow along the back behind that knee. And then down by her foot, the cloth partly comes in front of the foot. We need a shadow where those, those meet. And she's going to have this shadow color in between all of her toes. So we'll do that too. And then where else do we need? So her neck up here, light coming that way. So that part of her neck is going to get some shadow. want to make sure we get any spots that are... Um, uh, like under her chin, anywhere the light's not going to hit directly, that side of her cheek. Can see I missed a couple of spots on top of her head too. Look at those. So it's looking pretty much like I want it to. And then from the back, I think we need to put more shadow. Like the light is going to come through and catch the cloth there. But the, the, uh, her buttock there is going to cast a shadow in the cloth right there. So that skin tone is going to show through up there, but not further down. So we'll keep that into shadow. And just double checking that she didn't miss anywhere that I want to have this color. It's looking about right. Okay, so we're going to give that a minute to dry. And while that's drying, 
I think I'm going to put a first coat of paint on the base. So I'll grab my stony shadow color here, this gray shadow color, and I'm just going to put that on. Oh, that's her other foot right there. There we go. That is her other foot. So the leg is not back in there. It's further back in there. That is her other foot. So her feet are side by side. Her hip is just kind of a little bit lilted. Okay, that's good. Put this shadow color all over the base. And it's okay for this to go up on the cloth a little bit. Because this color is going to influence uh, the cloth where the cloth is sitting over it. It's okay to be a little bit messy. I'm not going to just go out of control here, but it's okay for it to creep a little bit up, a little bit up the cloth there, both on the front and on the shadow side. You notice I'm not being particularly careful about how I apply this. It's just kind of getting it on there, wiggling the brush. There we go. There's our first color on the base. Now, having realized that that's where her foot is, I'm going to make a little bit more of the golden shadow mix. And I'm going to fix that. I'm going to paint that other foot this color. Where the light would hit it. And her leg is clearly behind there, behind there. So I'm going to put a little bit of this in behind. And all of that, I'm going to make the revert it back to being the shadow color to get rid of that lighter strip that I put in. OK, that might seem like a whole lot of shadow and not a lot of light. It will make sense as I start adding the uh, the skin tone highlights in. Okay. So now we are going to paint a whole bunch of skin tone. So let me get a brush that I like better. Let's use this Da Vinci Size Zero. This has been one of my favorites lately. I'm going to need a little bit of flow improver for this. Just because uh, it's it's very dry here today, so things are drying out fast. And as anybody who's watched these videos before knows, the, the conditions here can change minute to minute. Okay, so that's got nice and dry now. Now, we can start painting skin tone. Okay, so I'm going to take a tiny bit of the burgundy wine. I'm going to add big old dollop of this golden shadow color in. And I want this to be slightly more golden than purple so that this next layer will show up on top of the layer we painted earlier. There we go. That's about what I want. It's a little bit more gold than purple. That's what it looks like. It's this color here. Actually, it doesn't really show up in camera. Let's do that. And I'm going to start doing what I've described many times before, which is as I find it, figure out where I'm going to highlight, I'm going to apply this color and then pull my brush strokes towards the light source. So the light is there. I know I want to highlight out here on the leg. So I'm going to start on the shadow edge, on the edge of where the shadow should start, and then my brush strokes are going to pull forward. And for now, I'm ignoring any cloth. Oh. What can easily happen at this stage is you start to make like a chalkiness on the raised parts. And if you start to see things getting chalky, just thin your paint a little bit. We want to have smooth brush strokes that come forward, but we don't want to end up with huge harsh lines like that. We want it to be a little bit softer. So we just go a little slow and carefully. And so each time we pull the brush strokes across towards the light source, 
you're going to end up with those little dots of color. We want to go back to the other side of the, of the object and pull the brush in from the other side and overlap that color pointing towards the light source. So we pull it in that way, pull it in that way. And we end up with the highlight basically pointing towards our light. Do that from the other side as well. And again, just ignore the existence of the cloth for now. The same thing lower down on her leg. Now, because we're painting this over this purple, it might look a little patchy. Don't worry about that too much yet, because we're going to be painting quite a few more layers of this skin tone. And each time we do this, it's going to look a little bit smoother. And then we can go back at the end and glaze on this color. To smooth things out. So there's the foot. There's that little hint of a leg showing through the cloth. There's the leg which is on the other side of the cloth. It's on the it's exposed skin. And then we keep working our way up. What we want to avoid doing is making any harsh lines. So we don't want to like Pull the paint across and then stop and leave. Let me do it with a bit of thicker paint. Pull the brush across and kind of stop and leave a yeah, leave a line. Right? Like we don't want to leave a hard, thick line like that. What we want to do is come from one side, pull the paint in gently. And then come from the other side and kind of work it through so we don't end up with a hard edge in the paint. Okay, that this is okay because this is where the highlight is going to be. We don't want to end up with something like that sitting in the wrong spot. That'll be very hard to cover over later. So we want to line all these up on the spot where we want the brightest highlight to be. Okay, and I've seen some people who do this will take a lighter color and make a line of the lightest color along where they want the brightest highlight to be. And that works too. There's nothing wrong with doing that approach. But I like to build up the color uh, to that point. So then her other leg back there is in there somewhere. And that would be her other knee right around there. Okay, and we got her stomach. Skin's not going to show through that belt. Her waist might show through that part of the cloth though. Her breast there is probably going to show through a little bit. And then we're up to painting the skin again. There's her neck chest. I'm going to do her face in a moment. Okay, the, Her hip back here is going to show, this might show through, so we'll paint the skin there. Okay, her arm, this part of her shoulder is going to have the highlight. So there's the light. So that, let's do that thing where we paint the highlight line first. The highlight line is going to be along, basically along there like that. Painting towards the light. So we'll go reach into the shadow from there and then pull forward to let the pigment land on top of the spot where the highlight should be. 
And we'll do the same thing from the other side. Reach into the shadow and pull forward. So that that lines up on that same highlight line. I remember what I said at the start. She's a, a daughter of Helios. So this, she's going to be, uh, based on that idea, she's going to be quite brightly painted. So this is still a very dark color. This is going to be kind of the transition color from the shadow to the, to the lit skin. So this, um, this color can impinge onto the shadow a little bit. We don't worry about that too much, okay? We're going to do that. And that was the front of the arm. Do her back of her shoulder blades. There's a spot right there. And then her shoulder shows down there. And we're going to paint right down under where the cloth would be without worrying about where the, the cloth texture is. And then on her other arm, the light's going to come across and probably catch her forearm a little bit under there. And the tips of her fingers. One there. And then two there. And maybe the top of her thumb are going to catch this color as well. If the light comes through that way. It might get the top of her forearm a little bit like that. Maybe a little bit on that bicep, but not too much. Most of this side is going to be in the shadow. Okay, so that color went on a bit thin. So I'm going to repeat that in a few spots just to bring the, to make it a little bit more opaque. There we go, that's good enough. And we're going to be applying this color a lot more. So we'll just let that dry for now. And then we're going to do her face. This is the first coat of paint on her face. So I want to hit. There's the highlight. So let's start with her forehead. So the forehead highlight is going to be right around there. Right around there. So I'm going to pull from the back forward across her, her forehead and her brow. And then come the other way. I'll end up with a highlight across her forehead. Now you want to be careful. Um, that's one spot where if you like tear up the paint, it's going to be really obvious. So try not to tear up the paint there too much. And then we're going to go. And so the, her nose needs this highlight color. And we'll do um, pretty much both sides of her nose. The cheek on the left side, which is in the shadow, we're going to do the main part of that round shape of her cheek. So we're pulling the light forward to the side of her nose from that side. under her nose, and then down along the jawline to her chin. And her chin is a little bit pointed. Mine's got a little bit of a strange um, dimple or something there. And then for the other cheek, we want to do under the brow a little bit. That eyelid, so she got eyelids on both sides that need to be done. And then the skin on that side should be, on that side of her face, pretty much all needs to be this color. Just going to build up those layers again. Okay, now we leave, it, leave that to let that dry so we don't do too much damage to it. Now the camera has a hard time focusing on this. Because we don't have a lot of contrast in the colors yet, but that's going to come here now. Alright, so we're going to take the golden shadow color, pretty much straight golden shadow now. And this is kind of the, the yellow rich tone that we're going to have in the skin. And everything that we already painted, we're going to do it again. With the But just very slightly smaller highlight here. So like 
where the shadow is on the edge of her leg. We're going to come in a little bit from that, not much, like just a millimeter or two. And we're going to pull that color inwards. Now that's, for me, is it's not working out all that well. I might have to change brushes and I might have to thin the paint a little bit more. It's a little bit thick. And I think I will change brushes. This brush is kind of beat up. Let's switch to, this one was fun yesterday. Let's try this one. This is a Zem, this is a Zem 3200 size two is what we're going to use now. Disable brush, a little bit more paint thinner in there. This is just flow improver. Slow down the drying time a little bit. And hopefully this is going to go a little bit smoother. Even if it doesn't, we have a way to smooth things out later on. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, so again, reach into the shadow and then pull forward. And don't completely cover the previous layer. And be careful not to tear up the partly dried layers of paint as you go. Because you'll be introducing a texture that'll be hard to get rid of later. Which I just did with that first bunch of brush strokes with the kind of beat up brush I was using. Okay, and we do the same thing on the lower leg. Pull the paint towards the light. From the shadow towards the light. And where we've got that little bit of flow improver in there. It's coming off the brush more smoothly now. And this brush is in much better shape, so I'm getting a better result. As before, I'm ignoring the cloth for the moment and just highlighting as though the cloth, cloth wasn't there. There's a little bit of her skin will show through right there at her hip, so we're gonna just keep going right over top of all of that. And we'll do this now. So as her leg comes up to her hip, we'll paint that cloth there as though the cloth wasn't there. Just paint it skin tone right up to the bottom of this belt that she's got going on here. And the belt kind of runs between those two marks. And I think it's just like the cloth wrapped around a couple of times. It's not a very thick belt, but the skin tone is not going to show through that. So we'll do skin tone up to beneath it, but not over top of it. Same at the back on her back of her right hip. Add a bit of this golden shadow color. Okay, I'm starting to redo stuff I shouldn't be redoing, but it's too late. I've started it. So I'm just applying this color a second time on the leg, which was a mistake. Um, it wasn't quite dry enough yet, but I needed to do that just to fix the fact that I made a mess. So fix that. So uh, her belly, her stomach here, this color is going to be visible across there. And then part way down. Her left leg, the light coming across this way is going to shine on the cloth and the skin will be slightly visible through there. Just paint it as though the cloth is not there. Just fixing those uh, harsh brush strokes on the other brush I was using. Okay. Now, above this belt, okay, the skin on her chest, right, or right there will be visible. And then this breast is going to show through a little bit. Right in the center of her chest there might show through. 
and then this curve of this breast. And then that part of her neck. We've got a collarbone right there, collarbone on the other side. And then her neck. Okay, so now we're doing this shoulder. This arm. Okay, and there's our light. So the highlight is going to point pretty much directly towards that. Make our way down the arm. Fingers. Now she's probably starting to look pretty orange to you at this point, but bear in mind we're going to keep going. There's going to be a lot of very desaturated highlights going on top of all this. And you might even feel like we need to glaze this color back in later if it gets too too uh, desaturated by the by the highlights. That's the back of that arm. And there's the back of her hand. Probably have to come back and reapply the shadows between her fingers. It's pretty normal. We do want to make them distinct in the finished model. Okay, back of the shoulder. Back of the torso. And then up here in the back of her right hip. Okay, making progress. And now we're going to do her face. Hopefully this is a little bit smoother this time, using a nicer brush now. I shouldn't say a nicer brush, it's just in better condition. That Da Vinci, I've used it for almost a year and kind of beat it up. Okay, so now the highlight on her forehead, there's the light source. So the highlights are all going to kind of line up. towards the light source. So cross the forehead. And then back a little bit. Bridge of the nose. Nostrils on each side. Eyelids on both sides. The top of the cheek on the shadow side. Top of the lip. And then we're going to come along the shadow side. Along her jawline. To her chin. Pull it along her chin. Then I'm going to remove that chunk of paint. Here we go. A little bit of fresh paint, a bit more flow improver. I uh, might have to go get some water to top my palette up. The pal oh, palette's all right still, but the palette is drying out quick. Okay, and then so the eyelid on the lit side needs quite a strong highlight. I want to be careful not to. Um, Get this color in the eye. We want to leave the eye unpainted for now. I already made a mess out of that. Just 
tip on this brush might be a little small for this. And if I went slower, it might work a little better. Okay, there we go. I'm going to take this, I'm going to go back down and do that foot again, the second foot, which is showing through under the cloth. And her right foot. Okay, I'm just going to work my way up along the body, doing this color all over again. Bring a little bit more of this color forward. I feel like this color got too desaturated by what was underneath it. So I'm just going to do it again. Bring this golden skin color out a little bit more. And keep working my way up. Once again, just ignoring the existence of the cloth up to the level of that belt. Do her left leg. Under the cloth. And then her chest. Curve of both breasts without covering over that shadow we put in earlier. And then top by her shoulder neck collarbones shoulder and right arm front of the right arm Back of the shoulder, torso, back of the hip, back of the arm, back of the hand, the fingers, and then face again. So forehead, eyelids, right cheek, lip, left cheek, and chin. And look at that, I hit her right in the middle of the eye with the purple. So we got to bring that purple back. Purple back in the eye. Now, some people like to paint the eyes early on. I'm not really fussed either way. I'm quite happy to paint the eyes at any stage. But uh, let's give all that skin tone a moment to dry before we do the next bit. So let's do the let's do the eyes now. Why not? All right, so our light source is kind of this way. So I'm going to give her, I'm gonna do the whites of the eyes with this, uh, this was leather white. Is that leather white? Yes, leather white. This will be the color for the sclera in her eyes. I'm going to leave that purple as the iris and the pupil. So I'm just going to paint in and she's going to be looking towards the light that way. So I'm just going to put in a little dot
opposite the light direction to be the whites of the eyes so that she appears to be looking to her right. There we go. And there they are. Now, I think I made those a little bit too big. So I'm going to grab some purple, burgundy wine, sorry. And using my super fine tip brush here, I'm going to enlarge those just a little tiny bit. And hopefully, not sneeze while I'm doing it. But I just I didn't get that wish. Just bringing that back a little bit. That's a little better. Kind of see that now. Okay. And now I'm going to put a little bit of that yellow color in, which I know sounds a bit mad, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, I think I'm going to use, I don't want to use really like a stark yellow. I think I will use Palomino Gold. Palomino Gold is a bit of a yellow ochre with a lot of white filler in it. So it's quite a light color. It'll go over the purple reasonably well. It's a pretty distinct yellow tone. And the aim is to just put this on the bottom of the iris. Now, this is more advanced. If you're not comfortable already with painting eyes, I recommend trying it, but just be aware you're probably not going to get it to work. And that's okay. So if it doesn't work, what do you do? Well, you just fill the eye socket with purple again, paint the sclera again, try again, nothing lost. So what I'm aiming to do is put a little drop of this on the lower part of the iris. And that's gonna make her eyes look yellow. Very creepy yellow, I might add. Woo! Creepy as anything. Okay. That might be a bit much. Yeah, that's a pretty creepy looking eyeball. All right. But she is a witch after all, so we're going to keep that. And then I'm going to put some tiny little white dots on there as the reflection dots. Now, where do the reflection dots go? Well, we know where our light source is. So from this perspective, the reflection dots should be basically uh, right in the edge of the iris, just slightly to the left from this perspective. Just need the tiniest, tiniest little white dot in the edge of the iris on the right side from my perspective. Why the right side? Because she's looking from our perspective to the left and her iris is past the light source. If she was looking straight ahead, these would probably be in the, um, almost in the center. Oh, look at that, it's way too much. Too big, so let's try cleaning that off. Nope. So we're going to go back to our purple and tidy that up. I kind of made it a little too big, so it, it spilled over into the sclera. So I'm just going to tidy that up. The little line of purple. If I get this right, we'll keep the dot in her eye, keep the sclera, and get the Reflection dot to stay. Man, eh, almost worked. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I can live with that. Was it the best eye that I ever painted? No. But that's okay. I'm happy with it. All right. I'm gonna, while I'm here, I'm going to paint a line of purple under her brow. Just to bring back the shape of her eyes a little bit. And there she is. Let's see if I can zoom that in a little bit. There she is. I'm happy with that. Okay. Now I need to touch up the edge of her hair right in there where some skin tones got on. And I know I'm going to be doing more skin tone, but I want her hair to be fairly dark. So I'm going to put that purple back now before I proceed. Put the other side as well. And around the share that the hair that's on her shoulders, bring the color back in there too. And she's got a bit of hair out on her left shoulder. We'll put on this color over that too. Oh no, that's a knot in the cloth. That is not her hair. Where does this cloth end? Somewhere like that, I think. Okay, so this line is probably going to go away, but that's the line of where the dress ends. Just to give me a bit of a reference point, I think I'm going to put a purple line, burgundy wine line, the edge of her belt as well, which runs kind of along there. And that way I'll know where the uh, skin transparent cloth effect can end at that point right about there and there's a little knot there's the belt and on the back it goes along there and along there and there's the dress edge How are we doing for time? Oh my god, we've been painting for 90 minutes already. Wow. Okay, let's keep going with skin tone. So now we're going to do uh, golden skin, 50% with 50% golden shadow. So it's going to be a much lighter color, a little bit of flow improver, and we're going to keep going with highlights. This time I'm going to do the face first and then work my way down. I want the face to be the focal point. So I'm going to start with that little knot in her forehead right there. And then a little knot below that. And then her nose, bridge of her nose, and the nostril on the right side. And just a little bit where the nostril flares on the left. Then I'm going to do her forehead. And the forehead highlight should be a little smaller now, but not too much smaller. Her forehead is quite flat. That's going to be quite a large highlight. More flow improver. That eyelid. Top and bottom eyelid. Cheek on the right side of her face, left from our perspective. Right down along beside her mouth. The upper lip curve of her chin. I think she's got a dimple in the middle of her chin, which is kind of the opposite of what I thought was there. I thought she had a pointy chin. So I'll just kind of fix that a little bit as we go. Eyelid on the left side, top and bottom, top of the cheek on the left side.
Okay, neck. It's a little bit of a highlight on the neck. Nice strong highlight on that uh, top of the collarbone. And then we're going to work our way down across her chest. So this part of her chest gets a nice bright highlight. Pulling towards the light source. And that purple line I did earlier, there it goes. It disappears under this highlight. Curve of her breasts on that side gets a nice round highlight. Remember, there's our light source, so the highlights are all pointing towards the light source. Front of her arm. And then all the way down. Thumb, forefinger, back of the hand, individual fingers, individual knuckles, back of the shoulder, a little bit on her back, not too much, back of the arm needs a little bit. Hip. Back of the elbow and the back of the arm. All right, we need to do other side of her chest. there once again just ignore the cloth paint it as though the cloth is not there and then at her waist just above the belt and then we continue down below the belt And just ignore the cloth texture for now. The time when we will fix that is uh, when we start painting the dress. That's when we'll add all the color over top of all that skin tone we've done under the cloth. Okay, so now we're doing, uh, let's do the left leg first. Just a little bit visible, doesn't have to be all the way down. And now we do the other leg. Shadow is there, the, highlight, uh, the light source there. So that's where our highlights line up to. Now this paint is not cooperating with me today. extra on the ankle and the top of the foot, top of her right foot, and the toes of the left foot where they stick out, a little bit on the calf of the left leg, and we do the top of the right leg. All right, just remember, Helios, bright skin, right? That's where we're headed. 
bright skin. Now we're going to use straight golden skin. I'm separating it out a bit on the palette, so I'm going to mix it up a bit. A little bit of flow improver. And I'll keep this focused towards the front now. So face first, a little knot on the brow, nose, nostril on each side, top of the left cheek. Forehead, eyelids, right cheek, top of the lip, and down onto her chin. All right, down the front of her neck, collarbone. Chest, find that highlight towards the light source, arm, breast, left breast, stomach, right arm, Right hand, fingers, right hip, probably asking yourself why am I repeating all these colors again and again and again and it gives me smooth finish color saturation bright um, bright color it's gonna get desaturated as I go here it's gonna be less bright but the colors are gonna be lighter the values are gonna go up and you remember I started with a very very dark shadow color but now we're gonna have very very strong light colors they're going to show really clearly and it's going to give us a very strong focal point on her face, uh, her upper body and the top of that leg, which is where we want it to be for her to be the mysterious sorceress enchantress that she is. We're going to have that whole thing we're going to do with the cloth when the time comes. So she's looking pretty bright. Now we're going to go golden skin with some creamy ivory added. I can't really give you an exact formula on this. It just it doesn't take much creamy ivory to lighten these colors. So just a little bit of that. And bear in mind that the creamy ivory uh, could be a little bit chalkier. Certainly the pure white is going to be chalky once we start using that. Using that. Um, so just be aware of that. So now each of these highlights is going to be slightly smaller than the last. Keeping in mind where our light is, being super, super careful not to hit the eyes with this. Bridge of the nose, just a little bit on the left cheek, much stronger highlight on the right cheek, facing the light. Upper lip, chin, front of the neck. Collarbone is right there. Now, this highlight on the chest, we want it to be smaller now. We're starting to make the skin look a little bit shinier. Our light is there. So, right down across this right breast. Again, this highlight needs to be smaller. Right 
right shoulder. Down the forearm. Back of the hand. Okay, left breast, small round highlight. Because the light direction. Stomach. Right hip. Again, just keep ignoring the cloth. When it's time to think about the cloth, I'll tell you. And then right down the middle of the leg. Kneecap. Calf muscle. Ankle. Top of the foot. A little bit on the top of the left leg. Now she's starting to look pretty well defined. All right, creamy ivory. We want to add more creamy ivory. Getting close to what might be one of our lightest skin tones. Maybe not, but we're getting close. So now, same again. But these are, we're starting to make the highlights quite small. Bridge of the nose. Eyelids. Right cheek. Top of the lip. Chin. Forehead. Nose a couple more times just for just because. Um, collarbone, bottom of the neck. Okay, so the left breast, I want the highlight to start being quite a bit smaller. Out here on the right part of her chest, smaller again. Circular round highlight on the breast. Top of the shoulder. And I think we we'll jump from the top of the shoulder now. Do a little bit of a highlight on the bicep. Then a little bit of a highlight down here on the forearm. Top of the thumb, not the whole thumb, just the top of the thumb. Across the back of the hand, knuckles, fingers, Okay, hip. Some of you may be discovering that you've put so much paint over this hip that the cloth details are disappearing. Um, that's just something you get used to with practice is um, how to apply the paint a bit thinner you don't fill in those details. Much like I need more practice on how to put on these final layers without creating a raised texture. It's one of the things I'm bad at. Ankle, top of the foot. Okay, I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Now, I am going to go one further layer, one more complete layer. But before I do that, I am going to 
bring back some of the burgundy wine in a couple of spots. Pretty obvious, I think. Edge of the hairline. Around the face. And her shoulders. Do that line under her eye again because I keep hitting it with the brush. There we go. And then, what was the other? Oh, the fingers. Need to do the fingers again. So put the burgundy wine, go back to her fingers and reapply. Because if I'm not sure if she's got a ring or that's a mold line, I'll have to figure that out later. But basically, need to put this paint back in between her fingers. So each finger is well separated from the one next to it. So those three lines. And the thumb has already got that. Could do the same thing for the toes, don't really need to. Toes on both feet. Okay, we need to give that a moment to dry while we, um, we just need to let it dry because I'm going to put one more highlight on there. I don't want to tear up the skin any further. So while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm going to do some daubs of green paint on the base. Let's do that. Blup, 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 blup. Just a little bit here and there. Just a few blobs here and there. Give the floor a bit of a green tone that make it stand out a bit from the other minis we've been painting. It's a different environment. So I'm just making these very irregular. You could also, um, you could dry brush these, I suppose, if you wanted to. I'm just going to dab the paint on. And I'm also going to do some pink in there, but do that later. Okay. That's all right. One more layer of skin tone. Ivory, straight ivory. A little bit of foam prover. It's the wrong brush. No, nope, it's the right brush. And these are just really the lightest highlights that I want. So we're going to do this the little angry knot she's got going on. Why would she be angry? I don't know. Probably because Odysseus is a jerk. People might not agree with my interpretation of that. I mean, after all, apparently she did turn his whole crew into pigs. I'm guessing they were kind of pigs before they got there, though. All right. Little dot on the collarbone. A little bit on this uh, highlight on the side of her chest. Smallish round highlight on her chest. A little bit on the top of the shoulder. Make that shape really stand out. We're going to glaze the uh, the skin tone back over this to smooth it out a little bit. So if you don't worry if you feel like you put too much ivory on here right now because we're going to glaze that back down momentarily. Back of the hand, knuckles, knuckle on the thumb. And then we're going to do one of these down the middle of her thigh. Calf muscle, just trying to make her leg look a little bit more rounded. But on the ankle, it's probably enough. 
There she is. Okay. So now we're going to glaze. I need to let that dry for just a minute. So let's do some hair. Throw some black and brown on there. Up there at the top of the palette. It doesn't matter what color you use. Um, I'm just using black and brown. I'm going to take that black and brown and put just a little bit of golden uh, skin shadow in it. Just a touch of it. Look at that, I just managed to pollute my golden skin shadow just before I went and made a glaze with it. How smart was that? Well done. And then I'm going to highlight the hair. The hair is composed of all these ringlets and curls, right? So anywhere that the ringlets or the curls point outwards in a curve towards the light, I'm going to put a highlight on the upper part of it. So you can end up with purple behind and light or brown on top. That's her fancy gold things on her head. Do the same thing on the crest of her head, on her crown of her head, just to bring it around shape. We got that laurel thing goes all the way around. So essentially what I'm going to do is highlight these round shapes to make like wave shapes. Just like the curly shapes of her hair. Get some contrast, make it look full bodied. All right, now I'm going to add lots of that golden skin shadow to that color. Do all of those highlights again, smaller. In this case, where we want to look a little bit shiny, we want these to be very small highlights now. Like only about half the size of the last ones you did at the most. And we're going to put a very light highlight on top of them to make them look make them look shiny. So this is like the the sunlight glinting off of her silky smooth curly hair. So even though she's got dark hair, the the, ref, the reflected light is going to look a little bit golden.
Hello, how's it going? So that should be dry enough now. That's uh, the bonus of having a little bit of a visit. And uh, so, so we just dropped in. So we just have a quick visit there. And then uh, now we are going to, uh, where was I? I don't remember. Golden skin on the hair is what I was doing. Golden shadow on the hair. So there's the golden shadow for the hair. And we need some more golden shadow for the skin. We're going to glaze the golden shadow over that. Okay. There we go. So now, do little highlights on the hair. That's what we're doing. We're going to make the hair look shiny by putting these tiny little golden shadow color highlights on there. So we've got the initial highlights on the hair. And we're just going to do some little highlights on the outside edge of any rounded shapes pointing towards the light source, keeping it simple. So there's our light, there's our little curvy shape in the hair, so we'll do a little highlight on the outside of all these curvy shapes on the hair. Make the hair look a little bit shiny. And where we did the earlier highlights everywhere all the way around the hair, we're only going to do these on the front, these lighter ones. So that we have a distinction between the way the light behaves on the front and the back of the figure. And of course, having said that, I go right to the back of the mini and keep doing them. Because, you know, dumb. There we go. There we go. Just a little bit to make it look a little shiny. And a little bit on the crown of her head, too. Not too much. Just like that. Okay, and there is the hair highlighted. Now we are going to do our golden shadow glaze. So we take the golden skin shadow, I'm going to put some off to the side, and I'm going to fill it full of water and fill it full of uh, flow improver. Make it quite thin. Not a lot on the brush. I'll show you how thick this is. It's practically nothing there. Okay. And then so here's how we do this. I'll do this on her face first. I'm going to put a little bit of this on and then push it off to the side. So I'm going to push this to this side. So I'll start here, pull this glaze all the way across and then push it off from the back corner. Okay, and that's going to bring some of that color back. And smooth out some of our maybe a little bit too aggressive light colored highlighting. Same thing across her lip. Now on the other side of her face, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to push it into the edge of the other hairline.
go. Neck. Same idea along her neck. All right. Now on the chest, I'm going to start up by her neck. I'm going to pull this right across and then push it down into the cloth off to the side. So we're bringing the color back, but keeping the high values and just pulling this off to the side and parking it. So the idea is we this golden dot of shadow color, we don't let it dry sitting on top of the highest highlights. We push it across the highlight and then leave the excess parked in the zone between the darkest purple shadow and our and our highlights. And that's gonna bring the color back, help smooth out things a little bit, and without um, giving us all those ugly tide marks that people hate so much. Do that on both sides of her chest. And then of course we're gonna hide a lot of this behind. A cloth effect. Across the hip. And pull it out the back. And now the spot that's a little bit more difficult is the leg. We don't have a lot of room to park that in here. We got lots of room to park it on the back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run a line of this along the inside of her leg, like that. And then I'm going to bring a line from the back of her leg all the way across. And then park it right where I just left that last bead of color. So we're going to get our gold color back without creating a huge problem of um, tide marks, okay? Or coffee stains, whatever people want to call them. There we go. Got some nice golden skin back. Okay, there she is. You can see that golden colors come back. Now, the fun bit. Now we are going to start painting our dress. Hmm, where am I? I think first thing I want to do, I'm going to fix the kind of lip color on her upper lip. We're going to bring back upper lip a little bit. Okay, and then uh, I think we need to give her some lipstick, not lipstick, but like a, a lip color. So I'm going to mix some of this neon glow with the golden shadow color. And we're going to put just a little bit of that on her lower lip as lip color, which I know seems a bit nuts, but should work. This particular mini, unfortunately, had a casting defect across the face. But hopefully, the way we highlight will bring out the shape and not the defect. Give her a little bit of an evil smirk. Now, I did want to put a little bit of red color into her skin. So I'm going to use, well, there are some Reaper colors you can use for this, but the one that's in range right now is Vallejo Cavalry Brown. 
and I like this color for putting a little bit of color into skin. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get a bit of the what color is her face. It's going to be the uh, Reaper Golden Skin. I'm going to thin it with some Flow Improver. And then we're going to add just the faintest touch of Calvary Brown into that, which is actually going to significantly change the color. It's going to be quite red. And what we're going to do with that, redder color, right there, there's the Calvary Brown, there's the mix, is I'm going to glaze that on her cheek as a shadow color, just below her... Uh, her um, so there's her high cheekbone. I'm going to glaze this, just a touch of this below that. Put a little bit of color back into her cheek. I'm going to do that on both sides. Now, where I did it on the first one, it was probably a little bit too light. And now on this side, it's a little too dark. So what do we do now, now that we've given her a little bit of clown makeup? Blend in the edge of it a little bit with a thinner blend, or a thinner mixture. A little bit of this on her neck as well on the top of her shoulder a little bit of color back in there and i'm going to do a little bit of this in the shadow zone on her leg right in the edge of the shadow on her leg Give her a little bit of warmth back in her skin. A little bit on that foot, and a little bit at the bottom of that calf muscle. Now, on her face, where I made it too light, or sorry, too too red. All we do is we go back to our mixes along here. Uh, the last color that we did was the straight ivory. So we'll go down one step from that, which is going to be a mixture of ivory and um, golden skin. And we're going to make a glaze of that. Glaze consistency, so quite thin. And I'm going to go over what I just did, blending the edges of it to make it look a little bit less harsh. So the red will still be present, but we're going to basically um, hide it just a little bit. So it'll show through what we just did a bit, but not too much. And that's exactly what I wanted. There we go. And I'll do the same thing where I put a little bit too much on her chest. There. And I'm happy with how it turned out on her leg. There's just a little bit of color in there. Quite happy with that. And forgetting about her hands on the other side, but say la vie. Now, I think part of the problem is that my eyes are just not good enough to tell whether it's in focus. I can stare at that all day and not know whether it's in focus. I need somebody to be chatting with me to tell me whether it's good or not. There we go. 
but I'm kind of hanging out by myself, so. Now, the dress. The dress is the next step. What brush is this? Da Vinci size one. So I'm now going to start mixing this. So as I said before, electric blue, the LED blue. When I mix the blue and the red, or orange, I get this weird looking kind of pastel purple color. Right there, this color. This is the color that I'm going to start with as the base coat for the dress. Now, this does not go everywhere. We only paint this, we we'll start on the shadow side basically, and we only paint this where there's no skin at all underneath. So as I look at the leg here, let's start at the back. So the cloak, or the part of the dress that comes back over her shoulder, none of this has skin underneath it. So I'm gonna start right up under the hairline here. And I'm going to paint this whole thing, this color, as a base coat. Because again, there's no skin underneath to change the color, to add deeper shadow or anything like that. I'm going to do that right around under, over the whole thing. All the way around to the front. So this is the bit that goes over her shoulder. So right underneath there. So this whole thing gets this color. Now, we also need this color at the bottom, close to the ground. And now, remember I said it before, it didn't matter if you got a little bit of the cloth gray or green at the bottom. This is why, because it's okay if those colors show through, because at the bottom, the dress is going to be transparent against the ground too. So we do that and work our way back to the back. And I'm only doing the very bottom part where it doesn't um, have any skin underneath it. There we go, make our way around. So if you're following along, you're probably asking yourself, can I just glaze the dress color over the top? And um, you can. It doesn't look quite the same as about what we're about to do. We're not going to use um, particularly thin paint to do this. Okay, so this part of the leg here, right, the, the cloth doesn't have any leg behind it or any skin behind it, so we're going to paint this color through this zone as well. Careful not to get this on the leg. So this is the cloth of the dress at the front. And then this part in here, this triangle, there's cloth behind that. So paint this color 
little stripes back there. But you don't have to go all the way up to the leg because the leg's going to cast a shadow on it, on the cloth behind. Okay. Same thing is going to happen here. We're going to paint up to the leg there. So essentially what we're doing right now is creating a base that when we start layering the neon red on top of this, the neon red is already present in this color. And the neon red is quite transparent. Okay, so it doesn't have enough coverage on its own to completely cover over the colors that are here. The particularly the mahogany or the uh that um Oh, words, Jeff, words. Purple, whatever that purple color is. Burgundy wine. It's not strong enough on its own to cover the burgundy wine. So when we put a mixture of the blue and the burgundy wine on top, or the blue, the mixture, mixture of the burgundy wine and the orange on top of the burgundy wine, okay, this has better coverage. This covers that color better than if we just try to do it with the straight uh, orange. But then what we're going to do is we're going to extend the, when we keep highlighting this up, we're going to highlight it with the orange, which is going to be transparent. And the skin tone is going to show through that. And then when we start adding the white to the orange, that's going to be opaque enough to hide the skin tone. And then we go all the way up to bright white and the skin tone is not going to show at all. But in the intermediate zone where we just did orange, the skin tone is going to show through. So let's do that now. So I'm just going to keep going. So anywhere that I have this skin tone, okay, I'm going to bring this underneath the color up close to it, but not over it. And I want the, the, the shadow color, the purple, to still be there. I don't want to hide that anywhere. So I'm putting this color on raised pieces of cloth now anywhere that there's like a fold or something that's created a raised up area of cloth these brushes are really just not cooperating with me today these brushes might be done their lifespan might be over We're going to do this on the belt part of the dress as well. Just bear in mind we don't want to completely cover that uh, burgundy wine bit. I'm doing a second coat of this color, creating a highlight and anywhere. So like this cloak here has these raised zones. I'm doing a second coat of this color on the raised areas. Pretty much there, I think. 
Okay, so now the hard bit. Now we're going to start adding progressively more and more of this neon red into the mix. And each time we do that, the mix gets thinner. Because the neon red is transparent. I need a little bit more flow improver. A little bit of flow improver in there so it dries out not as fast. And I just put a whole bunch of water in there, which is not what I wanted. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, let's do this on this part of the leg first. It's the easiest place to do it. I've got my uh, mix, which is more orange now. And I'm looking for the raised areas of the cloth. And it's okay if I go too far up. But I'm just painting the highest up part of the cloth. Almost like painting an edge highlight or line down the center of the raised sections of cloth. And by not painting the space in between, I'm allowing the color underneath, the skin color, to show through. But I'm also starting to introduce the color of the dress, this red color, in the areas where the light uh, doesn't pick up the skin tone. As I'm thinking about this might have been. Anyway, we're doing it. Only got about half an hour left, so I'm not going to get much more done besides this. just focusing on the raised areas. You can probably start to see the color coming in. You can do that pretty much everywhere. So there's a raised piece of the cloth there. Paint a little line of this color on that. Anywhere that there's a ridge in the cloth, we paint this color. It's a very narrow line of this color. We're not painting the whole thing just where, so essentially think about it this way, if the cloth is lifted off the skin, the cloth is going to be its own color. When the cloth is lying flat on the skin, the skin color is going to influence the cloth. So we add more of this color where the cloth is raised, we don't paint over the skin where the cloth would be lying flush on the skin. Okay. Is that going on at the back here too? There's a little ridge there. And then there's a little ridge that goes along the back. And then the lower part of the dress here is not touching the 
skin at all, so we painted the dress color. This is a little raised ridges, so we give them these nice highlights. Pretty much all the way to the bottom, but not right to the bottom, because right at the bottom, the ground is going to show through, and the ground influences the color of the dress in the same way. Back here behind her leg, we want to give a little bit more color to the center of that, not too much. Okay, let's keep going. Back here, we've got that raised bit over her hip. So still putting this next color over the raised areas that don't lie right against the skin. Focusing on the raised areas, creating nice little highlights. Skin on the back of that arm could use more attention. I have to go back and fix that later back in there. Let's just stay focused on the front for now. Okay, let's do some on the upper part of the dress at the front. So the dress goes right up into the corner by her shoulder in there. And the cloth is going to be wrapped around that ring at her, at her neck. That's going to be like a gold ring or something, a bone ring maybe. So where the cloth leans out only in two spots, like there and there, it's kind of draped loosely. And then that's on the left breast. On the right breast, it has a couple of more folds in it. So we'll get the cloth and those raised spots with this color. But we'll leave the cloth, which is laying on her skin, unpainted for now. There we go. So it's showing skin through the cloth. Okay. We add a bit more red. And so for with the red, anywhere that's going to be a little bit more in shadow. Um, not touching the skin. We're going to keep highlighting with red, so that's going to be like along the shadow in the back. It's kind of what we're hitting now. So we're highlighting with red where the light can't go through the cloth and pick up the skin color. You can see what I mean, I think, about how transparent this particular orange color is. A 
those earlier layers of blue really showing through. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to start adding a little bit of leather white. That was too much leather white into the mix. And this is going to make this um, red turn pink and make it more opaque. So then this color is what we're going to use to highlight the cloth over skin. So on her stomach here, create that little highlight. And this is where the like the, the light hitting is making reflections off the cloth. So the stuff that you just highlighted a moment ago, you're creating another highlight on top of that. So really, again, just the most raised areas over the skin get this color. So it may seem like this is a complicated technique. It, it's, it's really not. You just have to remember uh, which color to highlight with over which areas. So we're going to make a more opaque, lighter color to highlight over the skin areas. And we're going to use keep using the less opaque red to highlight the dress over the shadowed areas where there's no skin to show through. And the net result is going to be the look of a light colored light cloth that's influenced by whatever whatever is underneath it. Okay, we need to do more of this up on the chest now. this color right up to that metal ring. The metal ring, the cloth um, wraps around it, the ring under her, um, under her, I guess be on her left shoulder. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Oh, not too bad. Okay, so we're just going to keep doing that, and then uh, we're going to keep adding more white into the mix, and keep making these highlights brighter and brighter the same way as we did before, okay?
I've been talking for the last few minutes with the mic turned off. Basically, all I've been saying is just to keep uh, adding white to the mix to increase the value, so make it lighter. So we get nice, strong highlights to indicate the light direction. Adding white makes the mix more opaque, which means less of the skin shown will show through it. Just be careful not to paint that opaque mix over anywhere that you want the skin shown, the skin tone to be able to show through, or where we want the ground color to be able to show through. And we want to concentrate the lightest highlights on the front where the light is going to be able to hit and less on the back on the shadow side we want to keep that being quite close to that initial burgundy wine shadow that we made keep doing this and I want the dress to look more like a white color or a light pink than uh, than orange so I don't want to just keep painting that straight orange color on there. It'll turn the whole thing orange. We keep highlighting with that progressively lighter color. And eventually it's going to start to look more white than orange. And that's where I'm heading. And eventually I'll go all the way up to pure white on the highlights. Now one of the other things I'm going to do is I'm going to use the highlights that I did earlier to map where the highest highlights will be on the cloth. Because we want the cloth to look roughly as shiny as the skin underneath. And you might be looking at this thinking, well, I can't see the skin tone anymore. And we don't really want the skin tone to be, like we don't want the clothing to be invisible. What we're trying to do is give the suggestion of the skin showing through the cloth. So we keep doing this this way, and your brain will fill in those details for you. So why did I use the electric blue? Just really to desaturate that red initially all right I like the way that's coming together so this is straight leather white and I am going to go one layer lighter with this which is going to be solid white. And that'll be focused on where I want the the shiniest reflections on the cloth to be. If you feel like you've gone too light, you can always go back, glaze in some of the neon red, and that will bring some of that color back again 
dull things down a little bit more. It'll darken your uh, your highest highlights. Because even though it's transparent or translucent pigment, it's a fairly dark paint. One of the reasons it's kind of useful for doing things like object source lighting and that sort of thing. That's what I use it for quite a lot. There we go. So there she is in her fancy dress. Put a little bit more of this on the back. And if you slowly build up these lighter, more opaque layers, the cloth is going to look quite light and delicate. If you just leap from, you know, the, the neon red right up to white, it looks quite harsh. So you, there's a benefit to doing this in slow, small steps. And that benefit is in the, the way that it looks in the end. That, smoother look. But again, if you make it too light, you can always just go back a step, glaze some of the darker color over it, darken it down again. Smooth it out. That's lighter than I really wanted it to be. So I'll go back, grab some of the neon orange, neon red, and I'll glaze that back in and darken it back up again. Works just fine. Let's do some pure white highlights on there. So I'm trying to line this up with the lightest highlight. So like the leg has its lightest highlight there. So this is getting this kind of titanium white. highlight parallel to that highlight on the leg. Same thing all the way up.
Alright. That is probably all I'm going to have time for today, unfortunately. A little bit of white on her lip. A little shiny spot on her lip. Got good eyes. Got Maybe I'll just do a little bit of the gold so you can see how the gold would look. I'll do the gold on her um, bracelets and maybe the thing on her head. So I'm going to start with Balthazar Gold from Games Workshop. Get a dub of that on the palette. It's quite a dark metallic color. And I already painted everything that's gold the uh, purple color. So this color um, is going to be just to pick out those those shapes. It's like little laurel leaves and a thing on her head here. It doesn't it's not very wide. We're just picking out the main shapes of it. A little bit of gold. And this is why I painted them dark already, because I don't want to have to paint like three or four layers of um, of metallic paint over all of that to get this color to show up. So there we go. There's her little laurel crown. I'm going to do this on her... Um, bracelets and armbands as well. So there's the armband. I'm still going to have to go back and dark line around these. Just having had them painted dark earlier on um, it means I've got a good foundation color to put metallics on but I still need to really create a separation between these and uh, the background skin particularly where I, as I was painting the skin tone some of the skin tone crept right up onto these bracelets so I need to bring the dark lines back separate them out from the skin in this case you could do them with um, the um, burgundy wine if you want. Don't necessarily have to do them with black because most of this is resting directly against the skin tone and we've already established that burgundy wine throughout as the skin uh, shadow color. Now she's got that little staff there. I don't think that should be gold but her bowl here definitely needs to be gold. Her wine bowl. kind of odd going on with her hand there. Not really sure what's going on there. Maybe she's got big alien lobster claw hands. She's the daughter of Helios, the god of the sun who was a titan and uh, a nymph. Perse, I think, who was uh, daughter of Poseidon, if I remember correctly. So she's got lots of divine uh, blood going on in there. So she could have some strange sort of aquatic uh, elements in her ancestry. There we go. There's the golden bowl. The wine cup, an important part of the story, I guess. I think there might be some golden earrings in there. 
I'm not 100% sure. I think that is a golden earring right there. Wish Christine was on to tell me. Christine sometimes listens in when we're doing this. There, yeah, that's an earring for sure. And there might be one in there, but I can't really see it. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. It could be it right there. Hanging underneath. It's about the same height as the other one. So we're gonna call those earrings and be done with it. Yep, she's getting a golden staff. That wasn't my plan originally, but it is now. I'm gonna paint this gold. Magic wand, I guess. I tried looking up to see if this thing had some particular uh, historical or mythological identity, but I couldn't find anything. It just refers to it as a staff, so. That's what we'll treat it as. There we go. I'd like to be able to put some in there, but oh, I did it. Okay, now how are we doing here, Cersei? Are you feeling? Are you feeling the magic? I guess is the question. I think we need to put some lighter gray on the base. Do that with mix a little bit of gray, green, and gray. I'll dab some of these colors on top of the base. Make it look a little bit more complicated than it really is. Poor Da Vinci brushes had it. I have abused it for the last time, I think. More light gray. Fancy little stones on the base. Tried to replicate the pattern that was on the plastic base that she came with. It didn't quite work as I intended, but it's not horrible. Okay, yes, it's horrible. It could be worse. Nah, who am I kidding? <laughs> it couldn't be much worse. All right, let's put some wine in that cup. Greek wine back in the day was very, very dark. Thick grape wine was more like a syrup than the, what we think of wine as today. Probably why you could serve it in a big flat open bowl like this. All right, and then I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to make a wash out of that burgundy wine. And we're going to put that over the cup. Dull it down. And we're going to put it over the thing on her head, the little crown thing. dull it down as well and then we're going to highlight it with a lighter gold color and that'll give it an interesting contrast 
I really shouldn't put this over much else, but I'm going to break my own rules here. Because as this purple dries, if it touches anything, like the dress or whatever, it's going to make a water stain on the dress, which we don't really want to deal with at this stage. Same thing with the skin tone. It's going to make a horrible color mark on the skin tone. And we're just going to do it anyway because that's where I'm at in the day. There. Okay, so we let that dry. And while we're waiting for that to dry, I am going to paint the black rim on the base. Is that black? Oh, I haven't, have I? What color is that? That must be black. Must be. So paint that on the rim of the base. Might be nightshade purple. Oh, it's uh, black and brown. That's what it is. Must be. No, it's not. That's black and brown. What color is that? He said, wondering what he had put on the palette. That is dragon black. How do I know? Because when you lighten it, it turns to indigo. And dragon black is an indigo black. If you ever wonder what a color is, just lighten it with white, and the tint will tell you what color it used to be. There's your tip of the day. All right, so she's looking almost finished now. That happened quickly. I do, oh, look at that. I got gross purple dots on her butt. That was not intended. I wonder if it's still, I can wipe it off at this stage. Probably not. Oh, yeah, most of it wiped off. There we go. Not too bad. I do need to kind of define the edge of that dress a little better. So what I really need is my finest brush, a little bit of thinner. And let's use, let's mix some skin tone, a little bit of red, and a little bit of purple, a little more purple more red and we'll use that to outline those elements of the dress that would have a little bit of a shadow under them so that's going to be these rings by her hips the dress has these little open spots and these rings are what Hold it together. It's got those little rings on both sides. Over there. There's one. Another one in there. That one doesn't show as much. The little knot on the dress there needs to be a little bit better defined. There we go. The belt, what we were calling the belt before, where the cloth just overlaps a couple of times. So Give that a little bit of extra definition with this. There we go. Up by the top, by her chest, we need to do that. Right up there. A little bit of a shadow. Right up by that ring and then along her hip right here where the dress goes over this 
side or just define that a little better. And then down there where her foot sticks out from under it. I think, I think that is it for the dress. If you're really feeling saucy, you could put a pattern on it. I'm not feeling saucy. I'm feeling like I want to finish the gold. So we did the Bal Bal Balthazar gold. And now we need the smallest brush I can find that I use for metallics. It'll be this triple zero, triple zero Taclon brush. And I've got a little bit of Auric Armor Gold. And again, it's a Games Workshop Gold. And this one is like a paste, right? It's so thin and gooey that it's like a paste. And it uh, it's really easy to blend it on. So we just get a little bit on the brush. And then we can go along the Balthazar Gold here just where the light would catch it and just lightly brush on a little bit of this and it really radically changes the appearance of the gold color. I suppose I could have done the top of that gold and the stick as wood. It's too late now, it's done, it's gold. And we're gonna do, well she's the daughter of a god, right? So. Maybe she can have some money. Although she was um, cast out because uh, she murdered her first husband, according to legend. He was probably a philandering bastard that took after Zeus. I don't know. There we go, making that gold, very gold. Not everywhere, just like a little highlight where the light would catch the gold. And focusing it really towards the front more than towards the back. Just to, there we go. I'm very blingy now and I might need to get some more of this gold out kind of running out and now on the thing on her head the lore will do the same thing just catching the edge of the little round shapes I do want to be careful not to get this on her hair on her face I just want to make the shape stand out just a touch I will need some more gold go and then after this the last thing we need to do is the wine cup okay just enough to really pick that out I feel quite sure I just painted a bunch of her, her hair gold. Okay, the handle of the cup. The lip of the cup. Don't want to have to paint a bunch of skin tone over again. Just bringing up the lip of the cup. So then the question is, how am I going to make the wine color in the middle? I wonder, how am I going to make that look like liquidy wine? 
maybe I will just go the easy route and put some uh, varnish in there. Might be the way to go. I do feel like I have to fix that hair though, unfortunately. All right, a little bit of brown. go more brown that appears to be the only place that I did it so now I will just do some quick little highlights on those zones Fix the damage. We will call her done. There she is. All right, let's fix the focus yet again. And the last shot, I'm going to change the color balance so you can see what color she actually is. There. So that's closer to the actual color. Exposure down. Focus. So that's her. Wow. Well, can't tell whether it's the camera or my own eyes. I can't get a focus on that. Little column A, little column V, I guess. See if I can get a photograph of it and I'll post it. All right, so there she is. Cersei, transparent cloth effect. And that's it for today.